Tonight on SA Wine Weekly, we're here at the Hidden Sea in Coonawarra. Welcome back to SA Wine Weekly. This is our fourth? Fourth. Fourth show. We called it the Coonawarra show. But then we went to Pathway and they didn't really like it. But we, so <laughs> we, we were actually out. renamed it yeah. the Limestone Coast Show. So we are here today with Football Royalty. Nice to meet you, Steve. <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs> no, we're here with uh, Richie Vandenberg, ex Hawthorne captain. Yes, that's correct. Yes, um, and right. current board member. Ah uh, yes, I am. Current yeah. board member. Yeah, yeah, Chose you got your work cut out for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd just like yeah. to say that uh, yeah. I know about the prison. I don't think the viewers would notice. No, I don't. Yeah. Know. So yeah. we got to obviously we're here for the hidden sea. We are. We are here for the hidden sea. And it has to be one of my all-time favourites. And I have tried your wine. There's not that I don't like the wine, but there's a whole other reason why I really struck a chord with myself mm. was. I love to surf, I love the water, and I love what you guys are doing. And it has really given you a whole different avenue to market, I think, because there's not many people who are actually doing something for the environment and doing it so well. So tell us a little bit more about it. When did it start? Where are we up to? Yeah. The, the essence of the Hidden Sea is um, yeah, Justin uh, and I... Justin, my co-founder, and I, Justin um, Moran. Yeah. Uh, he he and I have got a, a passion for wine, and we've also got a passion for the ocean uh, and the fact that we're down here on the limestone coast. Um, we've been making wines down here since 2013. Um, wanted to find a way to bring the two together, and what better way to bring it together than to um, have a wine brand uh, that really signifies the region, being the Hidden Sea. Um, this whole ex region. Ex yeah, explain that because not many people actually know. Well, this whole region was once covered by the Great Southern Ocean. So yeah. if you go back some 26 million years, this was all under uh, under the ocean. So ah, it's a play on words, which is that's where that comes from. The hidden sea. Fantastic. Um, and the whale on the bottle. Uh, the the story behind the whale on the bottle is there is there are vineyards here, uh, especially over in Ratton Bully. There's a very famous one called the Whalebone Vineyard where there is a full size fossilised whale still to this day sitting under the vineyard which is estimated to be some 26 million years old. So that's where the brand the hidden sea and the whale comes from right. and then the tie to the ocean and the environmental impact that we're trying to make is our whole mission now is one wine one mission to remove plastic from the world's oceans and recycle it. Love that. So for, yeah it's pretty cool um, so for every bottle of wine we sell we pull out 10 plastic bottles out of the ocean and recycle it with our partner the Reese project and uh, that's so, the mission uh, that we're I'm on. Gonna I'm going to stop you there. Um, I'm just going to tell you stuff because I'm sweating out. In fact if you get changed right now it's probably a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I'll go put my Hawthorne one on alright. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. So how does that Reese project work? Are you getting just bottles out of the ocean or all sorts of plastics or? Yeah I, th I think when you uh, when you put a consumer promise out there, oh. um, you have to make sure it's fully audited, fully verified, and it's got real authenticity and transparency behind it. Yeah. So what the Reese project do is they're one of only two organisations globally that are fully audited and verified to the highest standards. So they, have, they literally have fishermen who go and pull the plastic out of the ocean. Yeah. The, it is all uh, blockchain technology, so it's all tracked and traced. We've yeah. got the QR codes on the bottle. It then goes back through a full sorting and recycling process, yep. all bagged and tagged. So everything is fully traceable, fully audited, fully and transparent. So that when people buy um, this bottle of wine and we make a claim, they know that the, the authenticity and the integrity of the product yep. is there. And we, we think that's absolutely critical in this day and age. If you're going to hold yourself to, to account, you've got to make yep. sure Sticky that um, yep. you leave make yourself sure to that right. course. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and I think that's, that's really fantastic. important because I bring it up a lot. I speak your story a lot. Yeah. I, I don't mind the story here and there. And um, <laughs> a lot of people say to me, well, how do they know? How do they? Yeah. So the fact that you go to that extent yeah. to make sure that what you are promising is yeah. delivered yeah. is yeah. absolutely amazing. And it's a massive issue. Yeah. Like, we're pretty lucky. Our beaches are pretty pristine. Well, if you look at, 
and this is the thing. So the problem is this big. If we don't do something about the amount of plastic that goes into the ocean, by 2050, there'll be more weight by, of plastic in the ocean than fish by 2050. Now, that is scary, scary how much plastic is going into our oceans. Mm -hmm. There is also studies out there now, and I think I've got a credit card on me, that each and every one of us, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, we're, we're consuming the equivalent of a credit card a week in microplastics, which is coming in through our food and water supplies. All right, so, um, and you gave me grief about long-winded stories. Um, <laughs> we've got a winemaker sitting here twiddling his thumbs. So, um, and we are a wine show, as much as... Uh, I just wanted to get that out at the start, because it's amazing. Yeah, yeah no, it's absolutely fantastic. Speaking of I really amazing, love that. we've got Stephen here as well. We do. So, thank you. what wine are we going to crack into first? Uh, so, we've got the 2020 Hidden Sea Rosé. Um, so, I'll pour your glass, chill. Love love slightly chill. Bottle design. Slight, slightly chill. Slightly thank chill. Slightly chill. So, when? Thank you very so much. So, when are you reckon? And then if we're at your house, would we be drinking a slightly chill? I'm oh, not inviting myself either. Well, mm. How would you have it? Yes, certainly. Um, for me, it's a, a wine that's best consumed in summer, autumn months. Uh, so this is from a combination of Shiraz and Cabernet varieties. Um, so we press this, so we treat it like a white wine as opposed to a red. Um, minimal time on skins, um, trying to retain the aromatics. And oh, she smells know. beautiful. Yeah, a oh, real wow. good job of that. Uh, so stylistically, I guess we like to strawberries and cream um, flavour profile. Strawberries and cream. 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 I'm into that. That is a good one. Yeah. So on the rosé scale, because um, there is a rosé scale. Yes. On dryness, um, where are we at? Uh, this is dry, which is what deliberately what we're targeting. <laughs> yep. it doesn't taste dry, yep. does it? Oh, I haven't even <laughs> tasted it. Yet. Fine, yeah. <laughs> I think it's magnificent what the guys have done with this. Um, so the big one, I think, for us, which we've been. Uh, blending and playing around with the colour. I think the change in the colour in rosé in the market has developed in the last four or five years. Yeah, um, and it's extremely important, isn't it, getting the colour right? Yeah, it's totally. For it to come off the shelf? Yes, yep. yeah. Um, even down to the, the colour of the bottle and yep. what you're presenting it in. Um, yep. But where I think the market's going more towards pale um, Provence style as opposed to the, the brighter purples. Um, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. each consumer is different. So. Oh, yeah. it's quite tasty, isn't it? It really is. And it, it's not as, it actually wasn't as dry as I was expecting. It's got that nice dry tone, but yes. it wasn't overpowering. It was just really lovely. Oh, the, the, yeah, the fruit's still popping through it. Right? Definitely. Yeah. 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 But it is dry. Yeah. Um, to me, rosé is, again, lower alcohol. You don't want something that's too, too heavy on the palate. Um, no. Sort of crisper. Mm. Good greatest. breakfast wine, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think, I think one of the briefs for the winemakers too for us is if you think about, you know, what, what the brand stands for, you want the wine to have, you know, full wine credentials and winemaking. Uh, but the big part of it is, is you want it to be that easy drinking style so that people can go, oh, gee, that's nice, and quickly get on to talking about the story and then yeah. create yeah. their own story around, you know, how they can become a part of, you know, what yeah. the Hidden Sea stands for. And I think like I'm, I'm actually con contributing to the environment by drinking a lot of your wine. Well, for every bottle we drink today, we'll pull out 10 plastic bottles. So if we get through the four, there's 40, 40 plastic bottles out. There you go. Um, four? Four bottles. Four bottles. <laughs> we should get through four. No, I reckon. Get bottle four. So let's talk uh, price. Mm -hmm. What What is a retailer? Yeah, so we're in that $15 to $20 range. Oh, wow. Um, Very affordable. Yeah, working off the... Uh, Working off the promos, you know, we sort of work around that 18 to 20 and then promo it down around the 15 mark. So oh. it's a 15 to 20 dollar bottle of wine. Fantastic. Hmm. That's it's where we see Very well priced with flavour in it. That's great. Hmm. So six, uh, obviously six packs and 12 packs available? Uh, we do it in six packs. Um, Just six packs? Oh, okay. Yeah, well you can buy 12. We, what we do is we get two together. six packs and put them together. <laughs> wow. That's, that's, that's the right, that, that makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> And we are clever, Danny. I reckon we should probably uh, give a little bit of kudos to the winemaker because he has done an exceptional job. Tell us a little bit about your background. Um, so, yeah, born in the South East on a farm, um, sheep cattle. My late father was looking at vineyards um, to plant, so I wanted to understand the wine industry and did a vintage to find out all about it. Um, and caught the bug, had no intention of being a winemaker. Um, worked in Canada, um, 
in Niagara Falls, did a vintage there, um, Portugal, California, and then came home and went back to study as a 25 year old. So was used to not having any money after backpacking for a couple of years. Yeah. Um, so You're still pretty used to that. Made sure you move better. Always in the mining industry. Let's go easy. So you worked your way around. And yeah, and tasted my way through Europe and North America. It was good. Nice. Um, but it's just a it's a great industry to be in. Um, whether it's in the vineyards with growers. Um, yep. Doing tastings, lunches, yep. um, being at a bulk wine fair and. Amsterdam or wherever it may be or um, you know talking to customers and then you know working with a team of people in the cellar and each year you get an opportunity to make make your mark um, and you're trying to improve on the year before so yep. does Richie do any of that help with any of that no we he's deliberately just, keep Richie out of yeah, that right, so. just the pace yeah no, well, no. Justin's the pace isn't he he's a good looking guy Justin. yeah isn't well, he he no he is he has got some uh, charisma too he reminds me of a young Bob Hawke. He's just got that aura about him. He told me this thing. He, he, he said, talk about it and, sit down and make sure you start better looking at Richie. So. How, did, how did you meet Justin? Yeah. How long's this show got? <laughs> I, I retired from playing football in 2007. At the end of the season, we, we took a what they call an end of season footy trip. And we ended up at a, uh, at a place called the, uh, the Mondrian Hotel over in West Hollywood. Um, they had a, apparently there was a big party there on. We heard about it, and um, it just so happened to be a Red Bull party, and that was when uh, the, a guy by the name of Gannot Freeberger, who took Red Bull to America, was selling it back to the owner Matterschitz in uh, in Austria, and uh, that was their big party to celebrate the sale of the business back. Justin and his good friends with Gannot. Right. And so he was there at this Red Bull party. Our footy team was at the same hotel at the same time, and that's how we met. Now, I'm not going to fill in the blanks, right, of what happened. I wouldn't be um, <laughs> But anyway, so that's how I met Justin. Um, I met him there. And then he, he brought, um, you know, the uh, sliced apple concept back to Australia that you saw on Qantas airplanes and, and that sort of thing. He brought that back to Australia, and I was, I was doing some orange juice for a while. And we crossed paths at a lot of trade shows, mm. and through his connection with, uh, through his connection with sliced apples, uh, he came across cider. That's how he got involved in uh -huh. cider winemaking. Yeah. He told me about this winery who was involved in doing making ciders, and I said, "Oh, that's funny. You know, I've got vineyards, and I've always wanted to get a winery." And uh, anyway, we came together, and in right, 2013, right we, yep. we founded we founded the business in 2013 after what was a pretty pretty rough start because. The industry had just come through uh, the financial crisis. There was a big wine glut in Australia, and, and, and we took on a, a facility, a big facility, and in a pretty tough time. But here we yeah. are. We're, st we're still fighting, as uh, Scotty Palmer would say, um, keep on punching. So uh, neither of you are that good at it. So how did you get Steve on board? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Steve. How did, how did you get it? Steve has been an absolute godsend for, for us. Him and him and Leisha, Leisha Munro is our other winemaker. We've got two two oh. winemakers, oh. and they've been absolutely fantastic. Um, for us, they've been locks in our in our business, and uh, Steve actually came back to the region when we were already going, and decided that he wasn't interested in what we're doing. So he came and worked down here with uh, one of the other wineries, and then uh, came to his senses, and we eventually recruited him back. And so he got fired. Yeah, from claimed him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he got <laughs> fired. He got fired. <laughs> Yeah, so no, so um, Leash has been with us from the start and Steve's been with us, um, when did you join? It was 15, 15, 15 so, so yeah, he's yeah, been seven, with us for a long time seven. now, so. Yeah. What about a pair with it, food was? Well, we, we've got our very own chef here today, um, the very good uh, yeah, you, you Kirby. Are, you are going right, mate. <laughs> you are going quite well. I've just got my own personal chef here today. Yeah. Oh, Kirby well, Shearer. Um, so, Kirby's right on cue, um, hopefully he can come in and talk to us, Nathan, because... Um, I'd be very interested to know what he thinks is, is the perfect is pairing, the perfect for, this pairing one. for this. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully he can call something in. All right. Let's call him in. What Probably uh, go, in, go in the middle of those two. Yeah. And, uh, How are you, folk? We good? Talk about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Better now than um, you So I was tasked with the, uh, the really hard task of like, I had to try these wines at home. That was <laughs> stressful. How it was really that? stressful. But, but I got through it. I got through it. We, we, we got there. Um, it's not what you said earlier about what we yeah. <laughs> So... 
we, with it, with our company, we, we source everything within 85 kilometres um, of our base, which yeah, is right, in our game. Uh, yeah, yeah, no company. worries. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, Sol, Solco is our company. Sol Projects is our catering company. We've been working with these guys since since the get-go. Right. Um, so it's been a great relationship. Um, on the plate here to pair with the rosé, we've got some beautiful duck. That's from Westerly Downs. It's a free-range duck. Um, it's been glazed in a tonkatsu, like a barbecue sauce, and it's been grilled over charcoal. Uh, we've got some warm quince, which is, uh, we've got a little retail space as well. I'll plug that, which is the tuck shop in right. Gambia. Um, we have regulars that come in and give us produce and say, oh, it grows on my tree, or it's from my backyard, or, so these quinces are from one of our regulars. Um, we've got some quince paste on so there as well. So they give you well. it, and you make the paste, sell it, and... No, no, we just make it for the kitchen to serve and, and oh, yeah, use. Right, and, yeah, they yeah, 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 they come and get some, so That's they'll come right. in and we'll, we'll you know, exchange gifts for coffee and whatever else. And yeah, um, yeah it's a great little community vibe. Um, so, yeah, you've got some warm quince, westerly uh, downs duck uh, with some tonkatsu, and you've got some little edible greens on there, and also some apples, which is from a tree in Glencoe, which is just away from here a little bit, um, just down the road. You know, just down the road's about 40 minutes, but um, and they have been salted. Uh, and um, then grilled uh, direct onto coal, and then just served with the actual what, duck. What, what, so, you, so what were you cooking it in the outside? A little hibachi, yeah, just a little hibachi, hibachi. grill. Hibachi. So, wow. Yeah, 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 so it's so pretty... What, what's the hibachi? So hibachi is like a little Japanese grill. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, you fill it with coals and you can cook with it. You can yep. get little ones at the table. Yeah, it's great. Hand-carved hand out of clay? Hand-carved out of clay from a little yeah. uh, village in Japan. Um, what was the village? The village, yeah. that village. Yeah, 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 The Japanese one. Yeah, 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 it's very hard to pronounce. Um, yeah, so th this is pretty much it, and I, and I wanted to do this because rosé has got this stigma of being sweet wine, sweet food items, and I think we've really got to start breaking down okay. the barriers. This rosé especially is such a great um, savoury rosé i found. Yes, it's got hints of strawberry, um, it's got some beautiful things going on there with texture, um, but I think something a bit sweeter, but also that's got the smokiness is going to really pair well with the rosé. But you tell me. I'm just a cook, so... Yeah. There you go. Thanks, Kirby. Thank All you right. very much. <laughs> Mate, he's not too bad on the camera. <laughs> well, He's got a short. 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 Another wealth of knowledge. Yeah. Fantastic. It, it really came through. But what we love about what um, Kirby brings to, to us and, and the brand is everything he does is locally sourced. It's yeah. foraged. Um, a lot of even local. indigenous ingredients. Yeah and ingredients that quite often you've never heard of, but it's all local and, and that's why we think it's a great fit for the brand. It's that whole sustainability message right. once again. Right. Crack into it. Fantastic, yeah. let's do it. Okay. You can set it up. Steve, I might need a little bit more because the tide's just out of mine. I did notice that yeah. you were thirsty. I was. It's because I've got to do all the talking because Jay does leave Very nice. Mm. Oh. Mm. It's absolutely beautiful. That quince on top is gorgeous. How are you feeling like it's pairing with the wine? Oh, we've got wine, have we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, again, I, I think it's a good match, what I'm mm. Kirby. Yep. Um, and I think the, the wine's matching well. Um, nice cleansing on the palate. Yep, You're not taking Refreshing. away from the wine, adding a little no. bit of sweetness, I think, there That's to right. it as well, especially the quince base. Yes. Uh, Compliments well, I'm quite uh, liking that. I don't that. think it actually goes that, together that well. You don't? Don't yeah. like it? Are oh, you and your think pairings? You know what I think would go, you know what I think would go extremely well with this? And I know you do have a bit of fruit down here, a pinot. A pinot? Oh, I love pinot. Do you? Oh, we'll oh. go for a walk out the back later and we try one. I do love pinot, but it is actually an awesome pairing. Well, I think it's the quince. The quince just cuts through. Look at that, we've even saved a little bit for the producers. Now that's. Oh, everyone's going to have a little taste, of course. Can't leave everyone out. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you take your personal chef with you wherever you go when you're doing shows like this or you're doing uh, tastings with... Um... Well, he's fresh out of Noma. You heard of the restaurant Noma, one, the number one restaurant in the world. I have. Yeah. I know all about Noma because uh, Justin sent me a message last night. I researched <laughs> this because Richard will probably bring it up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've we'll got a uh, question for the winemaker. Yes. Um, what were we, 2019? Uh, this is 2020. Does it vary? You said that obviously it was Shiraz and Cabernet. Cabernet, yeah. yeah. Yep. Does the mix vary depending on the fruit of the year or uh, did you keep it around about uh, 65, 35? Uh, it does. It, part of it's um, sort of tasting fruit in the vineyard and making yeah. an assessment on when the the fruits at the right flavour ripeness and also mm -hmm. with rosé um, you want to retain that natural acid yeah um, mm -hmm. 
but as far as varietal mix, we, we try and keep it the same. Um, we and have, what, what, what was the mix? Uh, so Shiraz Cab, it's 50-50. 50-50? I had a guess. Uh, really? 34, but... Yeah. Um, so yeah, picking decisions, we had to pick Shiraz and Cabernet earlier in the piece than what you would obviously for, yeah. for table wine. Um, so you want the, the flavours so that the wine doesn't end up um, being sort of skinny. So as a mm. consumer, um, and my wife loves rosé and she'll buy on colour. Oh, that's why you say good at it. His and wife loves it. Sure, I'll get plenty of practice. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, good at and plenty of criticism made out. Yeah. Take that's it. He's, from a, he's, a, very, he's yep. a very fortunate man. His, his wife, Rose, is um, definitely the rock in his family. Right. Mm. I, Speaking I, of talking right. people up, the other winemaker. We probably haven't touched on it enough, have we? Leash. Leash. Yeah. So, Leash has been uh, with us from the very beginning. Yeah. She's uh, had two children along the way, would you believe, um, and is still here running the show. So between oh. her and uh, her and Steve, powerhouse. Hey, uh, amazing. In fact, she should she should be the uh, the woman. What do they call them these days? The Women in Wine Awards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Leash will be a very worthy winner of that one day, um, and I think it will be thanks to the Hidden Sea and the work she's doing with us. Hopefully. Right. I'm happy. Yeah. To, I'm happy to nominate her. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. You nominate her. Yeah. No. So Leash, once again, a local, had a lot of lot of global experience, national experience. How did you guys stand again? Well, she really didn't want to be with us either, but we talked her into it. Yeah, right. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> there's a common theme there. Is, right. right. <laughs> is she very structured and does she have to keep steam in line? Yeah, so if you look yeah. at... Or is it the other way How around? How do you complement yeah. each other there? Yeah. 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 Uh, Leash is very organised. Yeah. 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 And I'm not. Leash is uh, very valuable to, to everyone, the whole team. Um, and also the, the cellar crew that um, make it happen for us as well. So. Cool. Yeah, operational, very good. Um, wine palette, understanding what the consumer is looking for, which mm -hmm. is a critical part, especially when you've got a brand like this, you know, understanding who your target consumer is and being able to tailor a wine towards exactly. them. Uh, it's one of Leisha's strengths. Yeah. Um, so her and Steve work together on that side of things. And, and then Steve also uh, sources a lot of our fruit. Um, and then, you know, has all of those grower relationships and, and any, you know, sort of excesses. He, he trades all the commercial side of the the business as well. Uh, so that's so, the link, that's uh, how the two so work together. Like what, what we like may be different to what our consumer is actually wanting. Yeah. And so, uh, you guys actually own a lot of vineyards. Um, is it, a, do you own the second most amount of vineyards in South Australia? No. Did Justin no. tell you that? Did huh? Justin tell you that? No, I just made it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, that one you, do, <laughs> you do actually own a lot of, because yeah, yeah, down here a lot of it is yeah. Your fruit is goes into the big boys' wines. Yep, correct. Because your yep. fruit is so good. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, yeah. do you keep the best fruit for yourself? And how much of the, your own fruit mm -hmm. are you selling off straight away to uh, balance the budget? Yeah, no, we, we use all of our own fruit. Yeah. Um, pretty much. Now, uh, I touched on it earlier before the show, we were just talking about my, my whole family is. is, is Growing, uh, growing grapes, the wine grape growers. Yeah. Um, so that's that's where the, the, the large vineyard holdings are. Um, but but from our perspective, we have a combination of our own vineyards. Yeah. Um, but then sourcing from the local growers. So we we are spread out, and the way we source is, is right across the region. So Padthaway, Ratton Bully, Coonawarra, Mount Benson, Robe. Uh, we like to have a good, really good spread yep. of, of the region, <coughs> and, nice. and that's how our wines come together. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to being single vineyard Just or that one anything area. like that. Yeah, right, eh? yeah. Mm -hmm. got that nice balance and that's between all of them. where Steve comes into it more too, because he's got that expertise of knowing where the fruit is and what the quality of the fruit is. Correct. So Steve's managing around 50 growers. We have about 50 growers um, wow. on top of what we do, um, that's and point. that's what pulls it pulls it all together. And we, we just love having that flexibility of regions and styles and and what, what it allows you to do is to be really creative, which is mm. what this game's all about. Have a bit of fun. So, uh, yeah, comment and like and share to double your chances and you can get your hands on a bottle of this beautiful rosé from the Hidden Sea. Oh, there might actually even More be, creative there might be a, a, some really good bonuses for this show. I'm actually not going to give them away, but there's going to be some really, really good prizes. Beautiful. There won't be one bottle, I can tell you that much. Oh.
We'll make the comment. Well, actually, it might be one, and you and I will split the rest. Well, we might. <laughs> well, no matter how many you give away, for every bottle that you do give away, we'll pull ten plastic bottles we'll out of the ocean and recycle it. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that gets done. Right. I feel so much better. Feel free. Now. Comment Good. away. Yeah. Sure, okay. So we're going to give more than one away. I think so. And no Hawthorne supporters. <laughs> No, There's not many of them anyway. There's not many of them. Not this year, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Give us a spell. If you haven't checked us out, come on over to youtube.com forward slash SA Wine Weekly. We have a collection of videos, including wine tastings, interviews with winemakers, and visits to amazing wineries. So join us and subscribe, like, and comment to win some amazing prizes. So I want to have a chat to you while we're selling the rosé. I want to have a chat to you about this goon bag. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> bring, it, bring it back the bag. The classy bring... goon sack. looks beautiful. Full circle. Full circle. This is made specifically for the Swedish market. Uh, they have a monopoly over in Sweden called System of Balaget. A big market? A big wine market? Or it's, it, is a, it, it is a big, no, it is a big wine market. But over in those Scandinavian countries, bag in box, which we used to call cask wine here, is is really common form of, of drinking wine so um we, we send the wine over there and it's this is all packaged over in over in europe and, and sold in the swedish market okay so we're going to move Still. on to wine number two wine number two chardonnay yeah. sauvignon blanc sauvignon blanc so, all right set you guys up with some sauvignon blanc, blanc. Oh, I'll take that. thank you would you usually have that before a rosé uh, you could i tend not to but not um, to. I go from rosé to savvy myself. Okay. Yeah, there's no right or wrong. Yeah. Richie, what would you Again, do? Personal preference. I'd go savvy first. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you like that one chilled as well, or do you like it yes. a little bit more room temperature? Or? Uh, no, chilled. Yep. Um, I think, again, very similar to the rosé. Mm -hmm. Easy drinking, light, vibrant, mm -hmm. more aromatics. Didn't really look after me, did it? <laughs> Uh, so the fruit for for this wine is sourced from Pablo as a region. Right. You know where that is? I do now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's some of the first whites that we pick out of the limestone coast each year. Yeah. Um, so interestingly, here we are in May. Sorry to cut you off, Steve. No, that's all right. Wouldn't it? This is our 2021 vintage wine already bottled. There you go. I was going to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say... Another, because we do get firsts on this show. Yeah. Yeah. And if they're not, sometimes we make it up. Yeah. But this would have to be almost a hit and see first, wouldn't it? A tasting on TV of the 2021. 2021? Absolutely, it's a first. But it would probably be the first um, Sauvignon Blanc from the region that's bottled and marketed. Oh, even, right even better. Wow. Sorry. Yeah, it went down the bottling line last Monday. Right. Yeah. Just for us. Just, just for you. Yeah, we had just for pre production for. Thank, thanks, mate. Just that's for great. yourselves. Yeah. Beautiful. No wonder it's fresh. I was yeah. about to say, it's really fresh. Mm. So yeah, part of the fruit for this blend is from Pabdoué. So Pabdoué mm. Sauvignon Blanc is yeah. more tropical, riper fruit flavours. Right. Um, blended with some Mount Benson. So um, we've got a vineyard there where you can see the ocean from the vineyard. Um, sort of red, sandier soils. And also a Mount Gambier component, which later ripening, um, cooler nighttime temperatures. and more of a gives it the acidic backbone to the wine so that mm -hmm. length on the palate. For the balance. so i'm interested yeah. about the Vibrant. maritime influence mm. of, of mount benson on on the sab yes what, how does that differ from the fruit that you're getting from uh, so with the being so close to the ocean um, in january february there is a southern there's an upwelling from the um, antarctic and the nighttime temperatures as a result of the ocean temperatures dropping are a lot cooler so on the coast, the, um, the flavours just take longer to develop. So you yeah. don't get the, the spikes. We do get some hot days on the coast, um, but unusual for, for the temperatures to get above sort of 30, 35. Um, so the flavour development in fruit there is, takes longer for it to come through. Whereas if from a more warmer oh, yeah. inland region, the flavours can kick in a lot quicker. Right. Making so it's got that, that grassiness that comes from the Mount Bents and Mount Gambier components. Um, but then it's also got a depth of flavour on the palate that's more your sort of pad the component. So when we're on the bench blending, we play around with the different percentages from each region. Yeah. Um, and what may work in one region one year may not be what we, we commit to the following year. So. And this vintage, 
yes. exceptional? Yeah, so the flavours came in really early. We didn't have a, a typical summer. We didn't get any spikes in the like heat waves in January, which we can get. Yeah. Um, so the flavours came in early, but the acids were really high. Um, so the first parcel we picked out of Padaway, um, I'll admit, we went too early. I think we we're keen to get into it. And once the juice was in tank, it was still quite tart. So we waited another week before we picked the remaining, um, the remainder of the block. And that fruit is more of that tropical flavours that we're looking for. Cool. Um, and what, what, do you, what do you think? What does the layman think? I, I really like that um, that grassy. It's, um, it's got grassy nose. Nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And and then the, the, with the tropical fruit, I just think it gives it a little bit of complexity. And Sauvignon Blanc's a pretty easy drinking sort of a wine, and that's mm. the whole idea mm. of it. But it's got some interest to it, and. It does. That's a. I, I think flavor. having that little bit of interest is um, is what makes it unique. Yeah. So yeah, eleven and a half percent alcohol. Um, so those right. flavours this year came in early, and yeah. you didn't need to wait for the fruit to get fully ripened um, before mm -hmm. you making those picking decisions. But mm -hmm. so, um, how do you rate this the other years? Yeah, I think it's um, as good as as good as we've made. Again, each year we're trying to make it better mm -hmm. and better. Yeah. Um, the um, will the natural get, acid really Will it get helps. a little bit better? I'm not saying it's not good, but will it get a little bit better with a little bit more time in bottle? Or Yes, yeah. So this is only went down the... This is a week old, effectively, yeah. this wine. Um, so we won't look to put this to the market until it sort of settles down a little bit in bottle. But, um, Which would be... How long would you set that down for? Yeah. Oh, only like a couple of weeks before yeah. we oh. run shelf. But um, yeah. this is sort of being shipped as we speak. So this will be on shelf in the UK and... A month. The Sainsbury have been a massive supporter of us over yeah. there, and that's part of the reason why we, we've pushed to get this wine out early, yeah. um, earlier than we probably would normally, but we're absolutely wrapped with the style and the result we've been able to get. But yeah, this is on its way to Sainsbury's, and uh, the uh, the UK consumer has really you know caught on to this the whole environmental message, which is fantastic. And we found the same thing up in the Nordic regions of, of, of Europe as well. So now we've just got to get the Aussies on board. Oh, that, that's happening. Yeah. I'm going to do whatever I can to help you because I oh, think yeah. it's, and that is a cracking wine. It is. Yeah. That, that yeah. flavour surprised me and the whole mouth thing. Yeah. It's just amazing, <laughs> isn't it? Like, just this, coats the whole mouth. This <laughs> region does Sauvignon Blanc so well. Yeah. I think the limestone coast is... No, it's not that well known though, is it? No. Because yeah. it's known for your traditional varieties. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. speaking like I actually know what I'm talking about, but I've been, you know, been yeah. here a week. Yeah. Um, but the Sauv Blanc is actually... Incredible. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, the region's known for Cabernet, right? So you've got the Coonawarra Cabernet. Back in the day, it was the Claret, so the Shiraz Cabernet. I think this region does Shiraz amazingly well. But the whites, the, the Sauvignon Blanc, the Pinot Gris, or Pinot Grigio, whichever style you want to make, the Chardonnays, I think this region really lends itself well to, to white wine making. Well, the colder climate, obviously, helps. Yeah, yeah. helps out. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Very similar climate down here, especially when you get over to Mount Gambia, Mount Benson, to, to Marlborough, New Zealand. Very similar. Right. Yeah. But we did have a like a very kind growing season, so yeah. there wasn't any disease pressures. We didn't have any extreme heat. We managed to evade frost, um, which is, can be a concern in this region. Um, Hence the big right. plans everywhere. Yes. Right. Yep. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and like the fruit was balanced and winemakers we had this year we had time to pick it when the flavours were there Obviously. sounds like you uh, actually had a pretty easy job this year it was yeah yeah last year it was a bit more challenging yeah. every year is yeah. different and that's i think the thing about the wine industry is at the end of the day mother nature plays a big part and yeah. we're just yeah, sort exactly. of skirting around the edges yeah mm -hmm. you look like you're built for this dish um what about steve right <laughs> so what i've decided to do with this one i'm um, playing on you know the tropical flavors of the the beautiful Sauv Blanc. Um, it's got, for me, like on the palate, it was really interesting. It had a bit of citrus and, mm. you know, it was good to cut through things, but I wanted to play on that more, so more that, uh, I guess, citrus, um, lemon, lime, that kind of thing. So we've got some pork, and the pork's from Beachport, which is a little town uh, in between Mount Gambier and Robe. Mm. It's a stunning town. If you ever got a chance, go there. God's yeah. country. Yeah, it's God, God's country indeed. I think that's mm. what Beachport mm. actually means in uh, in native tongue, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. What about Maybe. Japanese village? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we've got some beautiful pork. Um, so it's from uh, Beachport Berkshires. Um, and we've just got some loin that's been cured in some citrus. So I stole some, I mean, borrowed some lemons off the tree next door of my neighbours. Um, juice them onto the pork, a little bit of salt, that's it. So, Done. Not, so wow. you mean when you say cured, you mean it's not cooked? It's cured. Right. So it's cooked in yeah, acid. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So yep. I've, I've served it with a few little things. So we've got some um, some sea spray, which is a little succulent uh, found along the coast there. So um, just over the dunes, you'll find a heap of stuff. Beautiful. You know, so that's um, just forage local. Yeah, yeah, all, yep. all local stuff. Um, in, yeah. So you've got some sea spray um, on there as well. We've got some bower spinach, which is related to warrigal greens. So you've got some real textural elements there, salty textural elements going with the citrus. Um, and then yeah, yeah. And then we've got some um, some puffed rice on there, just to give it a real crunch. Uh, and some nasturtium from my garden, and a little bit of rocket for a bit of peppery kind of finish. So Love there you go. Nasturtium like in a dish. Hope it yep. works well. You know what? Well, 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 could, yeah. could you just explain that again? <laughs> in, in, in layman's terms. No <laughs> worries. Steve, Steve, why don't Look you at the serve of Jade that. first? And, uh, Look at that. Like to... No, go for it, Steve. Yeah, yeah take as much as you like, mate. <laughs> I'll leave you some. <laughs> um, would you usually pair pork with Sam? I'd probably be more Chardonnay. Um, a little bit more richer. Not saying so Turkey did anything wrong. No, no, no. But, and I think that oh, again, it works, works so well. Yeah. Obviously, he's had the little trick of um, the citrus in there. Mm. Yeah. And the really softness of the pork almost, it, um, the, the dryness almost and the mouthfeel of that sort of toned it down because it was so soft. Mm. It sort of like softened the, the whole palate for the wine. So I quite like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think not too many people would think of finding the, the citrus in the Sauvignon Blanc and then curing pork with citrus yes, and that's your, that's your food and wine pairing, that's pretty cool. And the succulent goes so well. <laughs> the succulent <laughs> stuff. I like the wild rice. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, no, they're certainly well matched. Um, mm, beautiful. If it was for me, I'd be thinking more your Chardonnay with a little bit more texture, but I think the acid in the Sauvignon Blanc complements the, the cured pork, mm. for sure. Mm. All right, so we're having a dinner party at your house? Yes. Tomorrow, aren't I? Um, what, would we be, what would you be pairing with it? I'd go to the beach and I'd um, crayfish. Oh. You, you guys are pretty spoiled, aren't eh? you? So beach yeah, port yeah. road, um, southern ocean, summertime, sitting on the deck, drinking sap blanc and eating crayfish. It's China doesn't want it, so it mm. doesn't get much better at the moment. Mm. Our crayfish could, could do us some help at the moment. Could they? I could help them. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, with the, the new trade embargoes in China, yeah. the, um, mm. a bit like what's happening with the wine, obviously the, right. the, the crayfish aren't going in either. So. It's more great fish right. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. horrible yeah. for them. Yeah. Mm, great for us. Great for us. Yeah. I actually, we've got a massive supporter who watches our show and he'll be loving your show. He's um, used to, I don't know if you know Adelaide that well, but Ocean Graphics is a, quite a massive surf, surf store back in the day. There was only a very few around back in the day. Yeah. It's the oldest building in Port Lunga and Mark used to own it. Yeah, right. And he moved over to Coffin Bay and he was crayfish, oh, fishing, mm -hmm. he's, and he eats. He's uh, retired now, and Skip's retired. And uh, he dropped in the other day, I haven't seen him for 15 years, messaged me, what are you doing? Dropped in, gave me a crayfish. Oh. And just as he did it, we were drawing prizes for the winners of one of the other shows, and he was one of the winners. <laughs> and, it wa and it wasn't rigged, like most draws are. Uh, he <laughs> actually- Cray for a wine, nice. Yeah, well, yeah. I actually gave him more. He out brought of personal <laughs> stash because I went, well, you gave me a crayfish, I want you to take this Fiano with you, because I've yeah, nice. got this real love for Fiano all of a sudden. Yes. You're and, going through um, a Fiano phase, aren't you? Huh? Yeah. Fiano phase at the moment. Oh, I had it for breakfast. Oh, it was the last show on a Riverland trip. We'd done seven shows in four or five days. Yeah. And uh, we stayed up with the Greeks until one o'clock in the morning drinking his uh, muse museum stuff. Wouldn't let us go. And uh, <laughs> nine o'clock I was at the wine centre for breakfast Fiano. Looks like you need some more, though. He always needs to top sure. up. Yeah, you did short pouring. Yeah, didn't That's you? It. You did. It's just, yeah. <laughs> but it's funny, you know, because even my old man, who, um, you know, he's in his 70s now, um, he's a Sauvignon Blanc drinker. It's aming. You know, I would never have thought that, that um, that's the way yeah. of going. Mum probably, mum probably more prefers Chardonnay, but Dad really loves Sauvignon Blanc, which, yeah, my dad. Both white fans. Um, you know, just your quintessential country man grew up drinking beer, um, and now they're enjoying Sauvignon Blanc. You, you're a real fan of the Sevies as well, aren't you? I really am. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I love an easy I like that. Usually, I really do. I don't yeah. like it, to be honest. It's no. not my cup of tea. No, no. Um, that's because I was such a novice. But yeah. I'm actually, white wine's really growing on me. Yeah. And I'm really starting, a bit like your dad, probably. Um, You're refining the palate there, Nathan. No, oh, just, our wines, we're so lucky. Oh, amazing. And the, uh, okay. the quality of wine we've got is just amazing. Mm. Yeah, it's next level these days. This is great. 
Yeah. Yeah. I can see this flying off the shelf. I hope so. We're, we're, we're flying it in, so hopefully it flies off. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. And, and a little one, comment one, there will help it fly off the shelves too. Yeah, so if you one, want to grab a bottle. What sort it. of comment should they come up with? Off the top of your head. What? I'd say something to do with more maritime. So maritime fact. Something to do a with useless the ocean, but interesting. Sea, a useless but yeah. interesting fact. Maritime something fact. Something maritime based. Right. so what we're going to do now is we're going to crack onto wine three, which is a 2019 The Hidden Sea Chardonnay. But I thought, Jade, what we could do was bring in our other winemaker. Let's do it. The main lady of the Hidden Sea being uh, Leisha Munro. But to do that, Beautiful. I didn't think it would be fair to kick Steve out. So why don't we get rid of Nathan? You run the show. <laughs> we'll bring, Off you go. We'll let, the, let the women do the work. Come See on. You, mate. <laughs> also, a, Fitz, a Fitzroy play would have never Just enjoy the line. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> in you come, Lee. Come join us, Leisha. Thanks. Nice to be here. So, tell us your talent. I'm born and bred on the Limestone Coast, so I think um, oh, really? that uh, I feel a real sense of place. A real, um, I love it here. So, Keith was my hometown, so a little bit further north. Wow. Um, but yeah, again, um, got into the wine industry because um, I saw an opportunity to travel and explore, and um, I still reflect on the best experiences that I've. Um, been a part of, have had great people, great food, great wine, um, in great places. So, um, Fantastic. that's the attraction to So, it keeps you down here? Yeah. 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 And as far as winemaking goes? As far as winemaking goes, yeah. So, um, it qualified um, and <laughs> then just went about um, finding the wines that I loved, not only drinking the most, but also sharing with others right. um, the most. And so, yeah, it's sort of here on the Limestone Coast to facilitate that journey. Yeah. Fantastic. How much fun. So, as far as this bottle goes. Right. Well, this, so what we're drinking today uh, is the 19, 2019 yep. um, Hidden Sea Chardonnay. So, mm -hmm. again, um, a blend of fruit sources from across the region. Mm -hmm. um, I'll try it and tell you a bit more about it. All right, I'm going to have a little look at the colour. Mm -hmm. All right. Got a little bit of that green, more of that little Yeah, so it's a pale straw. Um, yeah. You know, yep. hints of green, which I think um, yep. is always a testament to good Chardonnay. Yep. Um, there is a depth there, and I think when you look at a Chardonnay and it's got some depth, it automatically takes you to a place where it's um, probably got a fair bit of texture and fair right. flavour. So I'm not going for a buttery Chard here, like, you know, as people tend to typecast. Yeah, let's We're not going for something a little bit early, different. But yeah, um, so I think fruit expression is really important um, in this wine, so I think it's got that. Um, but it does have, the nice thing about making Chardonnay, is that you get the opportunity to sort of put your stamp on it. Um, so this one does have a little bit of mail on it, it's got a little bit of evoke, it's been kept on leaves for an extended period. Okay. Um, all sort of comes together in a glass. I'm gonna have a little bit. Let's have a little look. Well, it smells beautiful. So I, I mean, I get hints, of, yeah, everyone's palate's a little bit different, um, but hints of sort of peaches, um, nice sort of vanilla. Peaches notes. is a good one, yeah, a little bit of, yeah, a little bit of vanilla there I can smell. Beautiful, but I'm no expert, so let's have a taste. More of the riper fruit characters. Peach and... Oh, wow. Yeah, so I think you, with Chardonnay particularly, but a lot mm -hmm. of other varieties as well, mm -hmm. you get the chance to add that interest to a wine, mm -hmm. um, you get the chance to add the texture, you get the chance to add the oak, you get the It's got um, a really complex flavour for, uh, for a Chardonnay. Yeah, yeah. balance the acid. Yep. Um, Fantastic, I'm getting converted to Chardonnay now. Mm. Mm. That's absolutely beautiful. So it has got more layers of complexity than your Sauvignon Blanc and your Rosé, yes. um, which are more just drink and enjoy. Yep. Whereas I think the Chardonnay is a wine that sort of persists more on the palate and depth and length of flavour yep. for me. And something you'd go to? Is it a personal preference for you? or? Uh, I probably find myself with a glass of Sauvignon Blanc more often than a Chardonnay, okay. Um, okay. but it's not just, I guess that's probably what's golden at the front of the fridge mainly. So. <laughs> Whatever you've got on hand out of this range is, yep, yeah. so far so good. Yeah. Yep. It's probably, no, it's really lovely. Probably more winemaking goes into Chardonnay and yeah. takes longer for the wine to come together. Yeah, right. So what, what year is the bottle we're drinking, I'm sorry? 2019. Yeah, 19, yeah. 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 Um, so 2019 was a really interesting vintage, and again, everyone is. Um, but yeah. we had a lot of hot weather early, um, okay. and so that challenged some vineyards, um, but then right. after that we had sort of perfect growing conditions. So yeah. it's sort of a tale of two worlds. And again, the fruit from that makes up this blend yes. is predominantly pad the way um, yeah. from different sites. So some of the fruit comes from sort of sandier ridges. Okay. Um, 
some also from heavier clays. So the ripening time can vary sort of one to two weeks, depending on the soil types. Mm -hmm. um, again, we've got a Mount Gamby component in this, which would be a month later in ripening. Um, okay. So, and Mount Gamby cooler nights, again, similar to the Sauvignon Blanc, um, yes. is, gives it more acid sort of refinement, so. Yeah, no, it's got a beautiful aftertaste as well. It sits really nice and well. Yeah, it's quite textural. Yeah. It is, yeah. it really is. It's yeah. got a definite, yeah, a few layers in there that you can taste as you're taking different sips. I'm getting different flavours every time. Which and is I think really some nice. of it is, what, what are you thinking about? Where are you? Um, who are you with? Yeah. Um, that does yeah. just sort of, yeah, and Chardonnay does lend itself to that level of um, interaction with the wine, really. It's lovely. So what will we be pairing something like this with? Now we're moving into more of a a culture where you can drink anything with and, and anything together. Um, but I'll bring Kirby on and he can tell us about what he's prepared for us today. This little delicious concoction right. the front, I'm assuming, so, is what we're coming. Obviously, <laughs> we're not going to be able to share this number here in front of you. Um, it's going to be a bit hard for just us all. Just for show, it looks beautiful. Just for show, exactly. It's the it's the stunt prop. It is edible. It is edible. So if you really like it, you it's can keep it. It's not made out of plastic. <laughs> so, so I've got some little ones here. I've just broken one down for you. But this is a little taco and it's called a ricey. Taco, so it's rice and seaweed taco. Okay, so the outside looks Yeah, so rice different. and yep. seaweed. Um, and in there we've got some beautiful um, smoked ocean trout, but it's not from the ocean. The smoked ocean trout is again from beach ports. It's from an from a old Chinese man named Frank, um, Ostar Mariculture. Mm -hmm. And he brings salt water in, filters it, and has a trout farm and does aquaponics. So he grows his own, wow. um, so all his own herbs sort of and everything else. So yeah, it's, it's again, regenerative ocean. kind of farming, but for, wow. for ocean kind of stuff. So, you know, I, I tilt my hat to him because it's just an amazing setup and he's a beautiful man. Um, on there, we've also got some, uh, some fried shallots, uh, some yep. egg yolk. So Ooh. the eggs are from uh, the Splendid Egg okay. at Eight Mile Creek. Yep. Um, no, that's not where Eminem is wrapping. It's actually a place. <laughs> Um, so, uh, yeah, the egg yolks have just been cooked Thank to 64 you. degrees and, and the splendid egg are quite amazing as well because they, they're big on regenerative farming mm -hmm. as well. So, um, yeah, beautiful eggs. And then we've got uh, some crispy salt bush on top. So lots of textures. The smokiness, I think, goes well with this Chardonnay. Yep. I, if you were to ask me what kind of wine I love with whites, it's Chardonnays all day long. I'm a massive fan of Chardonnays. Really? Yeah, You're yeah, yeah definitely. To the Chardonnay. Yeah, yeah, way more than Sav Blanc, whereas my wife is more Sav Blanc. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, th I think the smokiness and the creaminess of the eggs pairs quite well with this Chardonnay. Yeah, so, well yeah, there you go. Let's find out. Enjoy. <laughs> Thanks, Kirby. So, I guess the balance of getting it from a few different vineyards just brings a whole different balance, especially if it's different soils, different climates, oh. things like that. Totally. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the fruit's one part of it, but then yeah. how we manage it in the wine in the winery itself mm -hmm. um, also plays a part. Um, so with this wine, some of it we press to um, press sorry to French oak barrels. So we'll okay. partial ferment. A little bit of oak there. Yep. yep. In in barrel ferment, and then some we'll do on planks. Uh, so newer barrels or older ones? Uh, traditionally, we sort of some new. Like again, we we can mix and match. Like, well, some will be one year old, two year old, three year old, okay. and then pick the select parcels that we want to go into the wine. So, if you look at the the limestone coast region, is about twenty six thousand square kilometres, mm -hmm. um, all the way from you got Padfaway, Ratton, Bully, Coonawarra are the sort of three main inland regions. Good mix of um, terra rossa soils, but also some yes. some black clay soils. Then, once you go back down over to Robe, Mount Gambier, certainly down through the Robe region, they're more alluvial, so much younger soils, right. and then you get over onto the, onto the coast. So you've got the different climates, inland's obviously warmer, Padbaway's warmer than, than Robe, yeah. and that's where the guys get so much flexibility in their winemaking. And that blend, that mm. balance when it comes to a glass of Jardin. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, it's gorgeous. And it does allow us each year to sort of draw on the strengths of each yeah, region. Exactly. Um, yeah, exactly. Like, what yeah. do you think the limestone coast does? do consistency really, really well. Right. Um, but some regions are less fortunate than others yep. um, year on year, so we are um, able to sort pick of what works at the time and yeah. Yeah, go with the taste and that. things like that. Yep. Hook, yep. hook right. in, guys, because Nathan's here right on cue. He's going to go sticky food. <laughs> Does that mean I can knew that was going to happen. I'd love to see how you felt about the hearing. He doesn't want me to lose my tooth again. Oh, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. I'm going to... Oh, well, cheers, guys. Thanks very much. I'm going to have a little uh, taste and see how it pairs. <laughs> All right. How are we feeling about the pairings? I'm about to dig in. 
That's beautiful. Well, I can go first because I've finished mine. <laughs> oh, attacked it. Well done. Smashed it, Lee. I did. Um, I haven't had the other two courses like you guys. Uh, like text, I think textures, the, the textures in that mm. dish um, really allow your palate to go on a journey and it's a similar journey to the wine. Um, right. You get fruit and freshness, which I to sort of take from the fish element, mm. um, and then you get the crunch and the sort of roundness um, from the food, which makes the wine feel round and coating as well. Right. So yeah, jump on in and uh, like and comment and you'll be able to grab a bottle of that beautiful Chardonnay. Go get them, girl. Right. <laughs> Go get them. On to wine number four. I'm looking forward to this one. What is it? We'll go Shiraz. Shiraz. We're on to the red. I think that's probably the thing I've learned the most. Finally. Since I've been in the area, mm -hmm. we've been in the area, mm -hmm. was, and coming from the Clarabelle, yeah, we didn't really rate the Kutawara <laughs> as a, a Shiraz region, but have we had some amazing Shirazes since we've been here? We really and I have. like my lighter style wines. Yes. With full fruit, but being a Pinot drinker. You like something a little softer on the yeah, palate? Yeah, I, I don't like good. a massive heavy wine, and some of the Shirazes we've off. had yeah. here, elegant. Yeah. I stole it from someone else, but is the word that I'll, I would say, majority of the wines from here we've had are easy drinking, full mm. of flavour, mm. and they've got that elegance to them, haven't they? Mm. They really have. Yeah. Been pretty I, I, again, I wouldn't jump for a Shiraz because of the boldness of it, because of that, and then it's just surprised me here. Yeah. I've enjoyed every one of them. So. So tell us about your Shiraz. Is it yours? Yes. Yep. Yep. This yeah, is your baby? No, yes, yes. Yeah, for sure. Um, so Shiraz, I think, as Jay, first thing she alluded to was the cult. Right. Yeah. Um, it's stunning. So that again, really burgundy, ruby tone. Yeah. Like. In the limestone coast, call it climate. Uh, we're on black that. here. We're on black. We're trying to do oh, the right thing and put it on the white. Does it? I can't really. Um, so do it under the skin tone. Yeah, the higher natural acidity again, which we see in the whites, also follows through to the reds, which mm -hmm. helps the vibrancy of the colour. Mm -hmm. So we don't ever have any issues with colour in in Shiraz out of the limestone coast. Can I just say one thing? Mate, we're still on the colour, not drinking. I'm into it. No, you're <laughs> on it. You're on it. So the colours right. just colour jumps out of the glass. Um, yep. So the colour's red, right? The colour's red. Right. Yeah. Uh, the it's bright. Ruby. <laughs> yeah, well, it's got, and it's got a depth of colour to it. So. Well, what surprises me is the look of it. I'm looking at it thinking it's going to be a really bold, big yep. wine. Yeah. For sure. Yep. Um, so again, with each region that we source fruit from, each region's got its own nuance. Um, so pad the way more tannin, more structure, which sort of building blocks for putting mm -hmm. a blend together. Mm -hmm. um, Rat Bully is more textural, right. um, sort of purple fruits, mulberry, and then Kunawara is more elegant again. Right. Um, so if you put the three and together with... Blend the three. Yeah, and okay. you look at Mount Benson, um, cooler climate again from the rest of the limestone coast. Mm -hmm. The flavours come in a lot earlier, but the acids are higher, so that lends itself to higher colours. Yeah. And it's stunning. Yeah, so... When you're putting a blend together, it's different percentages of the, each region. Once you've done all the hard work during the growing season from pruning, pruning June, mm -hmm. when the season starts, I like that. you've sprayed June. it, um, you've harvested it, you've got it in tank, it's sitting on skins, so the skins have got all the flavour, tannin. Right. You don't want to cut it short, so you want to extract all that flavour and colour yeah. out of the skins through ferment. Um, some parcels we do leave in skins for longer to try and soften the tannins. Okay. Um, and then other parcels will press to barrel at say two bome or two to four even to get some barrel fermented characteristics so we've still got some fruit sweetness and then the oak integration comes through so right. again similar with the chardonnay we'll do some we'll finish fermentation in barrel some will be on planks um, and some will just press straight through um, and then look to get put different blends so if you do that between the four different regions um, you've got different parcels to select from. Okay. So this wine, whilst it's come from four different regions, would have come from 20 to 30 different different tanks and options. So as a winemaker to be able to blend, that's where it all sort of melts together. That's where it comes together. That's where it ends. And that's where the talent comes in. Well, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just apparently. apparently. Well, so alcohol content? Um, yeah, so. A little higher? It is. Okay. Um, you want. Again, it comes back to that picking decision in the vineyard. Mm -hmm. You want the fruit to be ripe. You don't want any green tannins. Um, mm, no. And also assessing the seeds in the vineyard. Um, 
making sure that you know you've got that fruit flavour there. Um, some vineyards you can pick a little bit earlier, um, where the acids are still vibrant. Um, and again, you walk into one vineyard one week and you think, okay, that's a week away from picking. And as it gets closer and closer, you might come back a week later and you're like, no, it's still not quite there. Um, the beauty we've got that we can, we've got some growers, some of our own vineyards where you can pick a parcel, see what it looks like in the tank. And we've done it in the past where you, you push out harvest by a week and then you can compare the two from the same vineyard, grown oh. exactly the same way. And it's like that picking decision is, is vital in like the end product. All right, cheers. So we get cheers, nice. enjoy. Too much talking. Mm -hmm. Not at all, not at all. Wealth of knowledge, yeah, that's what we like. I would cheers you, but I can't <laughs> reach. Can, can we try it now? Hmm. Yeah, okay. Says the man who's drunk half the glass. Oh, the smell on that. Oh, it's black currant yeah. What year was it? This is 2020. 2020. 2020. So soft wow. and round. So it's new. How, the house style for red, for the hidden sea, soft and round. And uh, approachable, ready to drink? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then so, after how many years would you sit that down then and it would be a bit that's, more That's mellowed. a great question. How long would you lay it down for? Uh, so we want wines. I used to work in a bottle shop when I was studying and 90% of wines are consumed within 24 hours that they've been purchased. Of course. Yeah. So, Mine don't last any more than five minutes. So yeah, we all love to have a cellar, but reality is you buy wine, you want to drink it. In, in 2014, we won uh, the uh, trophy for the best Shiraz down here at the Limestone Coast Wine Show. That's 2014. Uh, Shiraz and I had a bottle of that the other day and it was drinking beautifully so that's six years um, yeah. but to be honest I don't reckon you'd want much longer so I think okay. it's been around that probably five years these wines are probably yep. sell for. Five is the last time? Five yep. to eight. They're, uh, it's, it's, drinking it's drinkable now. Well. It's drinkable now. Yeah. Yep. And, and, that, drink and that's, now. that's the key isn't it? You're yeah. making wine for people to drink now. Of Great. course. Some red with a bit of red meat. Yeah, a bit of red with a bit of red meat. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, Steve, but you're you're a lamb and Shiraz guy. I know that because you got a farm and or Cabernet, every, yeah, or Cabernet. But yeah, everyone everyone <laughs> likes pairing lamb down here with uh, with a good Mate, Shiraz. He's, he's not a guest. Yeah, that's no, okay. It's all good. But I, I thought I'd showcase some some local beef anyway, awesome. um, which is from here in Coonawarra. Um, we've just done some strip wine. It's uh, smoky, so it's grilled over the hibachi, and I've added a little bit of native rosemary. Uh, just to bring out the floral uh, flavour of the wine. Uh, you mentioned before you picked up some fruit in there. So we've actually got, I think later you might be going out to have a look at some wine, is that right? Some ferments? Yes. So we've got so. some fresh ferment wine in the sauce. So there was so, a bit of a oh. wine induction in there, wasn't it? Yeah, a little reduction in the sauce. So we've yeah. got a sauce with uh, the Shiraz. So the actual Shiraz has been used um, with the little wow. reduction. We've got some potato, because you need to have potato with steak, right? Of and course. coming from Pathway. You've got to have Pathway potatoes <laughs> and onions coming from Pathway, known for onions as well. Mm -hmm. This is a food yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. This we is a food ate thing. We don't pick it on Sunday. Yeah, you don't yeah. yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you've got red onions, they've been um, blackened and then they've been cooked in a beef broth. Uh, they're on top as well and a heap of herbs from my garden. So there you go. That's award winning steak and award winning Shiraz. Well, let's hope it is anyway. Cheers. All right. Mate. We'll find out. Cheers. Thank you very much, right. Kevin. Thank you. Is that true? You've never had a bad meal from him? No, never. Never? Never. We've had some of the most amazing meals. In fact, one of the best ones we had was th that dessert you made, which was like the terra rossa, when you did the mm. layers mm -hmm. using mm -hmm. chocolate and yep. crumb, yep. and went and, and made a terra rossa dessert. Mm. It was mm. quite amazing. Yep. That's stunning. The, the fruit, the, I like it because it's fresh, there's nice fruit there. It's such a palatable wine for if you want a barbecue, a meat if you want to, you know, use it with braised meats, you know, like the lamb shanks on a oh, winter's day. Oh, would be nice with a nice braise. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. it's just, it's a really nice wine. It's smashable with food. Um, some Shiraz mm -hmm. that you come across, obviously, uh, from, di from different yeah, climates like will be will be a lot more uh, richer and, and, you know, deeper. But this is just, it's stunning with food. It's really good. Yeah. I love the fact that no matter who tries to criticise it, they can't because you've got the proof in the background that you're actually doing the right thing. And well, that, that's massive because there's a lot of people spruiking there. Well, we're probably one of them, but um, spruiking they're doing something they're not. But you guys have got and gone to the nth degree to show that you are actually extracting. It took us six years to get to that point. You know, we, we, we've been, we, we associated ourselves with numerous ocean based charities, right. and it was all about awareness. Yes. Well, like, awareness is great, but we actually want to do the something. Action? Yeah. You've yeah. got to, we yeah. want to actually do something tangible, mm -hmm. do something tangible and mm -hmm. build the awareness at the same time. You know, and I learned this through football. If you look at the members of a football club, 
mm-hmm. you know, you know, Adelaide Crows, Port Adelaide, Hawthorne, whoever, you know, you've got 50, 60, eight, 70, eight. 80. Yeah. Brisbane. Brisbane, 10,000. So if you think about it, you know, mm-hmm. you've got, you got 36 players out in the field kicking a, a football around an oval, mm-hmm. and then all these people are there watching it. Why? Because yep. they want to be a, feel a part of something yeah. bigger than themselves, so they're yep. a part of a club. Survive. And mm-hmm. that's what we're doing here, is we're trying to create a, a whole tribe of people mm-hmm. that want to organise themselves around mm-hmm. a worthy cause, mm-hmm. um, and that worthy cause is, is, is to do something for the ocean, pull the plastic out, mm-hmm. And we all hope to just have a bit of fun along the way. So that's that's sort of the the background of how it all come come about, and we'll see how it goes. No. So is this a wine show or footy show? What's going on, boys? Well, I'm finally got something, mate. I can talk about something. Today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, now comment, like, share. Double those chances, and you're going to grab a bottle of the. And you, you know, you the usual winners are people going to give the hosts compliments. Yeah. If they'd stop doing it to Jay to give it to me every now and then, they'd probably more you chance of winning. But <laughs> we've had an awesome time. Um, this has been fantastic, thank you. I was in a little bit of awe, because you were a great footy player. I thought you would be bigger. A little bit starstruck, <laughs> are you there? Because you were such an enforcer on the field. Thanks heaps, guys. And thank you. I have Compliments to the chef. thoroughly enjoyed it, because I've really got a passion for this wine. Now I've tasted it and mm-hmm. met the winemakers. But for what you're doing, yep. for cleaning the sea up for my children, Love is it. amazing. So keep up the good work. Yep. And uh, see you again soon for some dessert and some um, other wines. Good on you. I think so. Great Cheers, time. guys. Good Thank on you very Cheers. much. Good time. Absolute Thank pleasure. You, Thank you. Can you some drink down there? Thanks, Kirby. Okay, so the special is if you purchase any of these wines you see today, you'll get 20% off. And they will also pull out per bottle 10 bottles of plastic from the ocean. Fantastic. Right, so I'm going to buy three cases. How so, many bottles? Oh, that's, um, <laughs> oh. let's see, that's, that's six in a case. Yeah. So you can work that out. You're a smart footballer. That's uh, actually, a, actually, which my daughter says. Yep, like, actually. That's 180 plastic bottles out of the ocean if you buy wow. three cases. There you go. Wow. Right, and and so you can get that. Actually buy six because of the, we really need to make a dent in it. I think we do. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Do yeah. Sure. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. And, and, and it's, it's, it's worth it. It's a free dessert that comes in again. Yeah. And, <laughs> and there's a QR code on the bottle. You can scan the QR code, which will be the proof to you that we're doing what we say we're going to do. Wow, that's fantastic. Full blockchain technology. It's all there. So, well, so far, we're nearly at 2 million plastic bottles out of the ocean since July 1 last year. There you go. One wine, one mission to help win. That's it. And save the environment while we're doing it. Good on you. Why not? Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you.